All right, so we're running through the Amish communities in Virginia today. I first did a profile of Amish in this state back in 2010 on the website. And at that time, there were only four Amish communities in the state. Today, that's up to 11 settlements. I'm going to talk about the different communities in Virginia today, a little bit about the businesses you can visit in some of those. At the end, I'm going to run through a couple of the historical Amish settlements. So the oldest Amish community in the state is also one of the more unusual that's a community at Parisburg in Giles County in the mountains. So that was founded there in 1993. The community is kind of located or centered around a valley called Walker Valley. So you just kind of you drive into this into this long valley with a river and you know you've got some beautiful scenery there of mountains on on either side. I found this to be quite a friendly community. I've been there two or three times. It's in a beautiful setting and Amish homes kind of in the mountains there, kind of some up on the hills and the main business there is a place called Walker Valley Market. And this is a classic Amish store uh, that offers foods, has a deli there, they make sandwiches there, the canned goods, uh, the bulk foods, the uh, health supplements, some homewares, uh, even has a furniture section in the back. It's a pretty impressive store as far as the sort of Amish market store category is concerned. Friendly people working there, in my experience. You can order a sandwich right there from the deli. You've got like a little sheet of paper that you check off kind of what ingredients you want, what meat, what cheese, what, you know, toppings. Sandwiches were delicious there. So those were some of the best Amish made deli sandwiches that I've ever eaten. Definitely worth a stop. I don't know of a lot of other businesses in this community. This is not a big community. It's a single church district in size. I'm going to guess it's probably under 20 households uh, right now. At one time, it had two church districts there, and it's declined to one. What makes this community unusual? I actually talked about them in my video on 10 unusual Amish communities. This is a seeker-friendly community. It has that reputation anyway. And so what does that mean, and what's a seeker? Well, seeker is someone who is interested in converting or joining a religious group, you know, in this case, the Amish. Now, most Amish do not look for... Uh, converts because, you know, they have a pretty good natural growth rate having families of six, eight, ten children, and most of those children choose to become Amish. It's not a religious group that's really oriented in general towards trying to bring in a lot of converts into the religion. And there's kind of obvious reasons why. that's not That wouldn't be easy to do for someone to kind of come in and adopt an Amish lifestyle. So you have to be pretty motivated uh, if you want to do that and if you want to succeed about uh, at that. I'll, I'll be doing a video on the question of joining the Amish at a later date. So uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already to stay up to date on, on videos here. Now, some uh, groups of Amish are more friendly, let's say, or more open towards converts. So the Parisburg Amish, one thing that makes them uh, sort of, you know, unusual is they have live interpretation during their church services for, you know, if there's someone there present that doesn't speak Pennsylvania Dutch, Pennsylvania German, right? Which are two names for basically the same language. And that's the native language of the Amish. So they have that kind of interesting facet of life there that they, they've done that or they've been known to do that in the past if you have someone who's not Amish there. So kind of the idea there is that, you know, if you want to be more open to outsiders, one of the big roadblocks is the language barrier. So they've, they've tried to address that. So the next community is one of my favorites to visit. And that's not even so much for the Amish community there as for the setting it's in. This is the community at Burke's Garden in Tazewell County. Uh, it's about probably an hour, hour and a half drive uh, from Harrisburg, also in the mountains. And this is one of the most unique mountain settings that I've ever visited because the community is set inside of a valley which was actually formed from a limestone cavern collapse a long time ago. If you look at it from like an aerial photo you can see that it, it kind of looks like an old like a crater or like a an, like a like a dormant volcano or something. It's known for its very rich soil so there's a lot of beef cattle that are raised there. In fact, the, the name of this place comes from a, a man named James Burke, who discovered the valley in the 1740s. And there's a story, I don't know if it's a legend, how true it is, but that he threw some, I think, potato peels kind of off to the side when he was there one year and then came back, I think, the next season or the next year 
and a bunch of potatoes had uh, plants had flourished there and gave it its name as a you know bricks garden as a very kind of fertile area the community here is not very big as you might guess there's about 14 16 households of amish living here you know maybe around 100 people they're originally from dover delaware so you can see the distinct buggy uh, style uh, that's uh, characteristic of that group here there are several businesses in this uh, valley. Now, to enter the valley, it's one of the most interesting parts because you there's only one paved road going into the valley. And you basically like ride up a, a ridge and it's a lot of cutbacks. It's one of the windiest roads that you might ever drive on um, to get in. So you kind of go up, wind your way up, and then wind your way down. It takes a little while to get in there. So one of the signs you'll see coming into the valley, or actually several signs you'll notice, are for a business called Maddie's Place. Maddie's Place is run by Maddie Slayball, an Amish woman. And it's a neat little Amish store. It's got, you know, your foods, it's got your, it's got your canned goods, it's got some clothing. It even has some Brooks Garden sort of tourist souvenir items. She even sells like baseball hats with Maddie's Place uh, right there on the hat. Never seen that before for an Amish business, uh, an Amish business with its own uh, baseball cap. But, you know, why not? You know, there are Amish items there too. There's Amish hats. Not a, not a huge store. She does have a kind of a deli sandwich, uh, warm food uh, part. She's got a bakery there. If Maddie's in, which probably she, she's been in there whenever I've been there, uh, you'll find her to be quite a friendly uh, person. Um, I found her to be quite talkative. She also rents bicycles because that's a popular thing to do for people that come to this valley. So rent a bicycle and ride it kind of around the interior of the valley. I'd never seen this before either, but I think the first time I went there, she had an actual ATM machine outside, just kind of in the middle of like this rural area outside, outside or like one of her buildings out there. So there are other businesses, a few other ones in this valley too. There is another general store there. There's a greenhouse, not a ton of places, not a ton of Amish there, but a beautiful setting and a unique place to visit. So another community kind of moving towards the more central uh, part of the state is at Halifax County near the town of Natalie or Nathalie spelled with an H. I don't know how to pronounce it. I mess up these pronunciations all the time, so you guys correct me. I visited this place back in 2011. At that time, it was a single church district in size, and today it's got four church districts. And this would be the second largest Virginia Amish settlement. There's about 400 Amish. These are Amish also from Dover, Delaware, originally. Land prices have gone up a lot there, and so when that happens, you get people moving out to start communities elsewhere where it's easier to acquire land, where it's easier to farm. This community started up in 2005. So Benny Ray and Mary Ann King run the King's Country Store here. I got to know this couple over the course of several visits there. I actually did a post on their store on my website. They let me come in, take photos of the place. It's an Amish variety store. Nice store. It's got kind of all the different kind of items and things you would expect to find in, a, in an Amish variety store. So that's kitchenware, utensils, Amish clothing, bird feeders, a large selection of wall clocks. You've got a lot of items for the local Amish community, like hair coverings, hats, socks, other clothing items, shoes, games and toys for children, health supplements, board games. Amish enjoy board games, a lot of them. Canned goods, cookbooks, candles. So a wide array of items. It's a variety store, so it lives up to its billing. I recommend stopping in. There are at least one or two other stores in this community as well. By the way, if you're liking this video, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up like. Uh, that will give us a little boost. I appreciate that. So there are several communities in Virginia, which we might call Lancaster family communities. So, that, so what I mean by that is they either come directly from Lancaster County or they came from another settlement related to Lancaster County. So the settlement at Charlotte County is one of these. This was founded by Amish uh, from St. Mary's County, which had been founded by Amish from Lancaster County way back in the 1940s. The community at Charlotte County is actually the largest in Virginia. It's got over 500 Amish living there. So you'll see the, uh, the, the characteristic gray buggies here. You will find some businesses here. There's uh, like a furniture or cabinet shop I stopped in. 
I would buy a greenhouse. There's dairy farms. I stopped at Esch's Variety Stand once or twice. So that's open Fridays and Saturdays. So that's just a two day a week business. It's basically a stand outside of an Amish family's home where they sell baked goods. They had some rag rugs there. They had canned goods. I got some hot pepper jelly there last time. Some really good oatmeal raisin cookies. It's cinnamon rolls. Uh, they sell eggs there. It's just a stand, so it's not a huge business. It's not a big store you go into. You know, they got a limited amount of things, but it's a nice little st store to stop at. I did find what you might call an off-the-beaten-path Amish store there. I'm not going to tell you where that is because, um, well, it's off the beaten path, and it actually doesn't have a sign or anything indicating where it is. So it's kind of, it's actually down a long lane, and they basically get mainly Amish business there, right? or the majority would be Amish business. That was my impression. Someone Amish told me about it, and I asked if it was okay if I go there, and they said that was, you know, they said that was fine, okay? So I'd have to say that when I got there, though, I didn't feel, you know, I, I felt the woman working there was maybe a little surprised to see me, okay? They probably don't get English people there that often. Just a little simple store. There is a produce auction house there, kind of in the, one of the main roads in this community. So they have a regular auction. I actually went down there and they, they were preparing for an auction, actually the school auction, uh, which was gonna be coming up in a couple days, which is something they do annually. The people look like Lancaster Amish, but it has a plainer feel because, you know, coming out of St. Mary's County, Maryland, that's kind of a plainer community, at least compared to the Lancaster people in general. And uh, you can kind of feel that in this community too as a, a daughter or a sister settlement. Now there's another community out of St. Mary's County, Maryland, uh, that's been started in the Northern Neck area, uh, Virginia, in Richmond County. Uh, also some Mennonites live in that area as well. Virginia as a state, by the way, has a, a, a good population of Mennonites, some old order Mennonites, which would be like horse and buggy Mennonites, kind of resemble the Amish in a number of ways, uh, Beachy Amish as well. So another community with Lancaster Amish people coming in is around the town of Farmville. And these are people moving there generally directly from Lancaster County. It started back in 2016 and it already had 40 some families when I visited there in 2019. In fact, one of my friends in Lancaster County told me that a lot of people are very uh, interested in this area. And apparently there was something like 30 families that were, I don't know, on a wait list or looking to buy property in the area at that time. So it's been kind of a hot spot for Amish moving out of Lancaster County. One of the main businesses, maybe the main business here, is the Pineview Bulk Food Store. This is owned by an Amishman named Omer Petersheim. I, I talked to him last time I was there. Uh, he let me take some photos of the store. I actually did a post on, on his store as well on the website. Pretty impressive store. Big store. It's got a deli. It's got sandwiches. It's got foods, candy, uh, baked goods, bakery. Omer's actually got a Facebook page for the store. Someone runs for him. They've got outdoor furniture. He's also got a promo for local students because the town of Farmville has, I think, one or two colleges there. One thing you'll see in these, especially in these smaller communities, is you'll have like a sign on one store advertising another Amish business in the area, just kind of letting people know about it. Omer had a sign for a place called Cotton Town Varieties, which was a variety store run by someone in his community. Unfortunately, couldn't make it there. It was already past closing time. There are actually two more settlements in Pittsylvania County, not Pennsylvania, but Pittsylvania County. Uh, one of them is around the town of Chatham. Uh, this was started by people from the Union Grove settlement in North Carolina. And they actually had a Amish run store there for, for a number of years. Prior to my visit there, I'd learned, actually, I found out that it had shut down. So I actually drove by the old store location and, you know, sure enough, it was, you could see where the store used to be, but it was uh, not in business anymore. I'm not sure if the owner moved away or what would happen there. So not a very big community, but that would be a new order Amish community of origins in, in that Union Grove settlement, which I talk about in the uh, video on Amish in North Carolina. Then there's a smaller community around the town or village of Gretna. So uh, other places with communities in Virginia, a couple of really small communities just started up in the past couple years. There's one in Highland County near the town or village of Monterey. And there's another one in Giles County, which Giles County is where Parisburg, the first settlement I talked about, is located. 
uh, around the town of Springdale or the village of Springdale. So both very small. So Virginia has 11 communities now, uh, been a popular state for the Amish. It's got about 1,600 Amish in the whole state, so it's not like it's a huge population, but there are a number of communities and kind of spread around the state in, in various areas. So depending where you live, you may have one of these Amish communities nearby to you. So there's been a number of historical Amish settlements in Virginia that have come and gone over the years. And I just want to take a few minutes and run through a couple of these briefly. My source on this is a book called The Amish in America, Settlements That Failed, 1840 to 1960, by a man named David Luthie, who is an Amishman that lives in Canada. Really nice book if you're interested in this topic. I don't know how easy it is to find now, but uh, I got mine in an Amish store some years ago, there are a handful of settlements uh, starting in the late 1800s of Amish in Virginia. There was a settlement at Midland in, and I know, I know I'm going to mess up this pronunciation, Fauquier, 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 Fauquier County. This was founded in 1892. Interestingly, it was in pretty close proximity to Washington, D.C., which was just about 50 miles away. So there was a railway line that you know, went from the settlement to D.C. So the Amish there were able to sell their kind of their dairy and their produce uh, in the city there. Luthi also says that the Amish took excursions to the city and they would pay like an 80 cent round trip ticket to go from Midland to, to D.C. and back again. So you would have kind of a little bit of Amish tourism in, it, in those times. And it's uh, interesting, too, because Amish do like to visit the city sometimes, and Washington, D.C. is one place that Lancaster County Amish, it's a pretty relatively short trip for them, so you may see Amish in Washington, D.C. next time you're there. So this community grew fairly quickly and had a total of 27 Amish households over its existence, but also went extinct quite quickly for really for unexplained reasons. Within a decade, by 1901, the last Amish had left the settlement. So that happens sometimes, communities there just briefly. There's something about the area that attracted them, and then for whatever reason, it maybe just doesn't work out there. Or maybe those were Amish that have itchy feet in general, so they want to move on to a different location. Historically, anyway, sometimes Amish have joined other movements. Uh, they've become you know, more progressive uh, religious movements. They've, some of them become Mennonite churches. Another interesting one, there was a, there was a quote-unquote coastal Amish settlement that was located uh, near Kempsville. It was near the town of Norfolk, and they would sell products in that town as well. They'd sell produce, they would sell sausage, and um, this Amish community was uh, referred to by the name of Norfolk. You know, Amish communities are often named or called by the name of the local town or area that they're near. And a train actually connected this community to Virginia Beach area. So I gave them a chance to visit the ocean pretty easily. Not bad if you're a horse and buggy community to have that type of transportation easily available, especially in those days. So a lot of farmers here. So what happened here was they were actually in close proximity to another more progressive, uh, what you'd call an Amish Mennonite group. And eventually the Amish there uh, adopted uh, electricity and started using tractors uh, for, you know, transport. Uh, they had meeting houses there because a lot of these people came from Somerset County, Pennsylvania, which is a meeting house community. Eventually what happened was members of this community pushed for the adoption of the automobile. So some of the Amish there were not in agreement with that. So they ended up moving to the area of Stewart's Draft, Virginia, in the Shenandoah Valley. The remaining Amish became affiliated with the Beachy Amish, which is a group that has similarities to the Amish, but permits more technology and some other some other differences. There really are hardly any traces of the Amish settlement there, or maybe none at all, due to the kind of the urbanization of that area where they once lived in the Norfolk area. And then the Stewart's Draft community, which lasted from 1942 to the early 1980s, that one eventually disbanded as well. Some of those families joined the Beachy Amish, and some of those families moved to Tennessee. There was also another community at Portsmouth, uh, which lasted from 1927 to 1945. So not a ton of Amish settlement in Virginia's history, but if we look at just the past uh, 10 years or so, you've, you're writing a new history of uh, new Amish settlements. I said at the beginning of this video that number has really grown from 4 to 11. 
I wouldn't be surprised if that continues. If we see you know more settlements starting in the state, there's obviously something that's attractive about it to them. Now, so that may be uh, the proximity to their home communities. So you know, if you have the Dover, Delaware Amish, that's uh, you know Virginia is relatively close journey to get back to the home settlement where you have your relatives and your uh, you know your your family and everything. And of course, with uh, Lancaster County uh, nearby as well, I wouldn't be surprised if there are more uh, Lancaster-based settlements uh, that start up here in the coming years. I'd also wouldn't be surprised to see that Farmville community grow significantly in the coming years. So the Amish population in Virginia comes in at about number 16 on the list of 31 Amish states. I did a video on the top 10 Amish states where I run through uh, number 10 all the way down to number 1 tell you a little bit about each state, so you can check that out here. Interesting fact, the top three Amish states have over 60% of the Amish population. Odds are that if you're Amish, you come from one of those three states. 